Hey guys, it's Katie here with Life Mundane and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you guys what our morning homeschool routine looks like. I know many of you guys have asked me, how do I schedule homeschooling with so many kids? How do we get it all done? Today, I'm not gonna share with you our entire school day, but I am gonna share from the time the kids get up until the time that we get ready for lunch. So that time period, we usually stop for lunch anywhere between 12 and 12.30, if that kind of gives you an idea. And I'm gonna share with you guys everything that we do in that time period. So let's get started. Hi, my name is Katie and welcome to Life in the Mundane. I am a second generation homeschool mom of six beautiful kiddos. And on this channel, we talk all things resources. I love to share with you resources that are gonna help you in your homeschooling and help encourage you in your biblical parenting and how you can utilize those to their fullest potential so that you can make the most of the little moments. So the way we start out our day is we shoot to have the kids up by 7.30 in the morning on school mornings. Now sometimes this stretches to 7.45 or even eight o'clock, but definitely a little later than eight o'clock, each of my kids will wake up. They go ahead and get their own breakfast. There are a selection of different breakfast items they know they have access to that they can grab. They make themselves breakfast, will eat, They'll then do their chores. They'll have time to take their medicine, their vitamins, things like that. And then um, they will wrap up that time by spending time doing their devotions. For some of my kids, they can do their devotions on their own. For others of them, they maybe struggle with reading or don't know how to read yet. So I sit down and do those devotions with them. And so that is just a really sweet and important time for our family of being able to get time to set aside to be in God's word and a good way to set up a habit that'll hopefully last a lifetime. Once everybody has gotten up, gotten their chores done, gotten their breakfast and done their devotions, then it is time for the beginning of our school day. The beginning of our school day now starts with movement time first thing in the morning. Thanks to Ryan over at Mama on a Mission. And it has been such a lifesaver. Sometimes we'll do outdoor activities, especially as the weather is getting nicer. We might take a walk in the morning or have the kids um, do some kind of exercise outdoor. But many times, at least recently, with it being hotter, we have been doing our um, we've been doing our movement time down in the basement. We will put on a YouTube channel, either something like Cosmic Kids Yoga or PE Bowman um, or something like that, dance music, things like that, just to get them up and moving. This this time can last anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes depending on how the kids are holding up and also how soon they get done with all their other morning routine items. It gives them a chance to move their bodies, get their brains ready for school, and to kind of work out some of that energy that can kind of come up during our morning basket time. So that now brings us to our morning basket time or what we're calling this year our morning menus. We gather together as a family and each kid will pick up their morning menu, which is all done for them, and their hymnals, and then also a dry erase marker. We'll sit down together and we'll spend a little bit of time going over each of the pieces of material in our morning menu. We start out with some Bible memory work as we're memorizing Psalms 1. Then we go into learning or reciting the Apostles' Creed, which is what we're studying this particular month. We then move on to a hymn of the month that we will sing all the verses of, and then we go into our Bible time. Now our Bible time alternates between having our Bible curriculum that we're using from Apologia or going in and doing a little bit more of an in-depth study on the different parts of our worship service and why we do the things that we do. So we kind of just alternate back and forth which one. This particular day we were doing our Apologia, Who is God study. Then we move into prayer time. And each month we have a different area of prayer focus. This month we are praying for Haiti and the things going on there. I'll take the opportunity to kind of mix this up. Some days everybody will pray and they'll just pray for one thing on our list. Some days I limit it and I say just the boys are gonna pray or just the older girls or just the younger girls are gonna pray. And sometimes then we just have one person pray. It gives us an opportunity to practice different lengths of prayers and to help my kids grow in their prayer life while still keeping a focus that is kind of outside of their typical view of the world. I want them to have a much bigger view of everything that's going on. So this is one of the ways that we do that. 
We then wrap up our morning menu time by having the kids recite this kind of mantra. I don't know if that's the right word or not, but it is a say it's a series of sayings that we say every morning to kind of help us get focused on doing our best in our schoolwork, to help us keeping focused on our own progress and not on others, which is definitely something we struggle with here. Just kind of a fun saying that would help stick in my kids' minds, reminders that they need to work hard and to do their best. So we go over that every single morning and then we break off. At this point, my older kids will be doing their day of the week work on the back of their morning menu. That's where the dry erase marker comes in and they'll fill out what the date is and they'll fill out what the day of the week is. They'll also um, repeat together the 30 days has September poem and they'll do that at the bottom. While they're working on that, I am going over what's on the back of the morning menu for the little ones, which is a picture of the Ten Commandments. That's something we're studying in Sunday school, and so we go over that each and every day. Once we're done with our morning menu time, all the menus and the hymnals are put away, and it is time for everybody to kind of break off. Now I'm gonna try and share with you guys what everybody's doing during the different periods of time and hopefully I don't lose anybody. So what happens here is my three oldest ones will now go do their independent work list. With this, it includes, but is not limited to, independent reading, doing extra math on the computer, doing their teaching textbooks work on their computer. A couple of them have Explode the Code they do. One of my other sons has Fix It Grammar and Spelling that he also does, but they have their own list that they can go out and do on their own. They set off to do that and they can do that in any order they like. So some start with reading, others start with math and so on and so forth. While they're doing that, I break off and spend 10 minutes sitting down with the two littlest ones going through our basket and we pick out just a few things each day to do together. We oftentimes will read a book or play with one of our educational toys like our, like our monkey balance game. And then while we're doing that 10 minutes together, my middle daughter is off doing 10 minutes of listening to an audiobook. I don't assign that audiobook to her. She can pick whatever she wants, but it's just 10 minutes that she's doing that so I can give the littlest ones my full attention. Once that 10 minutes is over, the little ones go downstairs and they will have a leapfrog movie. We have a couple of different ones and I actually purchase a new one each month so that we can add a new one into the rotation. Um, they can pick out whichever one they want, but they'll watch that leapfrog movie. So that buys me about 30 minutes of them being fully focused on the TV. The older kids are still working on independent time during this era and then I'm going to take my middle daughter and we're going to sit down at the table and tackle her work that has to be done. We do things like her Horizons Math, we do Explode the Code, and we do Happy Cheater Reading together. Again, she can pick whichever order she would like to do for each of these subjects, but we just sit down one-on-one -on -one without any interruptions and it's my time to focus on her and to help her what she needs to do. When we finish that, we close up all the books, put them away, and then I have the younger ones come up after the movie is over and everybody takes a quick snack break. Once the snack is done, I will take all three of the youngest ones, my middle daughter and my two little ones, and we go downstairs. We'll spend this time to work on their purely preschool curriculum. If you're not familiar with purely preschool, I will link a video up in the iCards and down in the description below that tells you 10 things that you should know about this amazing curriculum. But we take the opportunity to work on that. Now this time period varies a lot because this time period that we work on their preschool curriculum is only as long as the older kids need before they start needing my help. You see, I give each of my kids designated focus time where I'm just spending time with them and helping them with what they need. But after that time has been spent with the youngest ones, so sometimes this is as easy as I go downstairs and I read the book for the day. Other days we get to do a fun activity, like this particular day we got to paint our alphabet A with different fingerprints as we were making apples all over our A. So some days are more involved, other days are not as much. After this point, when my older kids start to need me, I put on the song on YouTube for that particular unit for your pre preschool for the little ones to watch. And then after that, they are just released to go play. They can play independently. And I found that this is just enough time, maybe about an hour or so between then and lunch when they can just kind of play independently and not get into too much trouble or be too distracting. At this point, my older kids are ready for my help. 
I might sit down and help them answer a few questions they got stuck on on teaching textbooks. Maybe they need to read aloud something to me and they need me to listen. We also use the sunlight reading guides, even though we don't actually use sunlight curriculum, that assigns my kids reading and then it gives them different comprehension questions and gives me the answer. So even if I haven't read the book, I can still test their comprehension. So they'll come to me during that period of time, I'll ask them their comprehension questions um, and things like that. So I'm just kind of helping them work through any problems that they might have. This will then release my oldest daughter and my oldest son from work. As soon as they're done with that, they can just go off and have a little bit of free time. That brings me to my second oldest son. He has a little bit more work because academically he is a little bit further ahead. My oldest son does have high functioning autism and uh, severe dyslexia as well as some auditory processing issues and other things. So we handle things just a little bit differently. That's the beauty of homeschooling is that we can tailor their education to exactly what each child needs. After my oldest son and my oldest daughter are done with their work, they will go off and join the little ones and playing outside, just getting some free time. And that is now the time that I turn around and set aside for my second son. We will sit down one-on-one. -on -one. I will answer his questions just like I answered the questions with the other kids, but he also is doing fix it grammar and all about spelling, which require a little bit more of me checking in. So for fix it grammar, he does it all by himself, but I do check his work each and every day just to make sure that he's not missing a concept. So I'll do that at that time. And then with all about spelling, it does require me to sit down and teach him the lesson. So I will sit down and work with him, teach him that, make sure he is all good to go. And while he is doing that, a lot of times my oldest daughter has started making lunch. That kind of wraps up our morning routine. Now we do have time that we spend in the afternoon continuing our learning. This is the bulk in the morning of our heavier or more important basics, I guess you would say. And in the afternoon is more enrichment and learning, science and histories, read alouds, geography, things like that. If you guys would like to see a video seeing what my afternoon routine looks like, please comment that down below. And I hope that you guys will subscribe and stick around because we have a lot of great content coming up. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.